proper long M dashes. The next thing we need to consider is um, funny letters and extra spaces. Now, unfortunately, uh, when the documents were taken from one from one PDF into the Word documents, some funny stuff kind of gotten embedded in the text. So here we can see "Don't laugh," and there's a quotation mark at the end, which seems a little bizarre. So the best thing to do is to flip back to your original and just check to make sure things like that make sense. So here we have don't laugh and you can see down that it was an exclamation mark and not a quotation mark. So it's all just about catching that kind of funny stuff and ensuring that um, and ensuring that it is proper. You can also see uh, Quite often, there's one for L's or nine for nine in place of G's. Uh, there's uh, either you can catch this by reading through, or you can use your find function and just type in the number one, and just make sure that every time you see a one, it's actually in front of a number and not in place of an L. Like here, you can see in lecture that this is actually a one and we want this to be an L instead. So those are all, that's options for that. Or here you can see in please that something just kind of doesn't look right. It looks a little too spaced out and that's when you can tell it's a one instead of an L and you can replace it manually. Uh, finally, oh, in addition, I guess it's not finally. Um, in addition, you when you read through the text, you can see bizarre breaks sometimes. And let's see if I can find one of those. Let me have a title here. There we go. You'll have these funny lines inside the text and um, what those are is if you flip back to the original you can see that John Holt sometimes puts uh, this line in between two ideas. Often it's somebody writing in and then he adds this break and then makes his own comments on the issue. So uh, sometimes they get transported in and look like this. Sometimes they get transported in and look like this. Uh, sometimes they don't get transported in at all. So constantly referring back to the original is really important. So when you have this bizarre line, it's really difficult to make it, it seems difficult to make it go away. What you do is you highlight the top and the bottom line, you don't need to, you just need one, and you just double check that it's hold normal, and that makes that line go away. But we're still looking to put in the break, so the best thing to do is uh, just hit your enter function, put in eight dashes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you're going to highlight this and hit the hold h1 function and you're going to center it. So now this document looks very sim oops, this document looks very similar to this document here. And here you can see another example of uh, when it's clearly a title that has been cap or clearly a journal or a, a book title that has been capitalized and not a subtitle of the text and you can just go title case and your journal title. There we go. Uh, the last thing that needs to be considered is uh, when you go through the original document, you'll notice um, some underlining. You'll notice uh, this, and this is uh, either the author of the piece or this is Holt's way of adding emphasis. And when back when there was typewriters, when this was written, there was kind of no italic italicis. So now it's our job to go through and italicize all these words. So the best way to do this is an unschooled special child. So when you're reading through, make sure that um, you're catching these underlines. Best thing to do is check what title it's under or subtitle it's under. So we're going to go back up to our subtitle, unschooled special child, and we're going to put our cursor right at the very beginning. The best way to find the, this is once you put your cursor at the beginning of the subtitle is just to type in the word you're looking for. Quite often it'll be, it'll pull it up right away for you. 
then all you have to do is highlight the word that you want to italicize and command I to uh, to get it done. If you go back to your original you can see it happens again just slightly down in the word cheapness. So again you go back to your original, you scroll down and you can see cheapness here. This time we didn't even need to use our find function and you can italicize it there. So your job is to really go through the document and try and catch all these little uh, all these little errors that have been put in because of the uh, PDF conversions or uh, just because of the bizarre uh, way that the formattings happened and so uh, and so it does take a little bit of time and it does take some careful eyes but uh, but um, Eventually, after your first page or two, you'll get really good at finding all these sneaky little things. And we really appreciate your help. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at any time. I will be happy to get back to you and help you through any of the troubles that you're having. All right, bye for now.